Hey there, folks. So, it's time to take a look at yet another brand new backlight kit. They always are, aren't they? Anyway, uh, big shout out to Retro Game Repair Shop for shooting this my way to check out. Let's see what we got here. So, in our case, warning, test before installation. Always recommend testing the kit before committing to an install. It'll save you a lot of time if you get something that isn't quite working right. But, it'll also save you a lot of hassle trying to return the thing. Anyway, here's what we got. Brand new. I haven't seen these ones before in person yet, and there are some new features that I am eager to take a look at. Uh, so it looks like we've got a brand new screen. Um, even looking at the manufacture date on this thing, 2022, February 15. Uh, for reference, it is March 21st, so this thing's a little over a month old. Um, we got the LCD. Got, come on out of here. Ribbon to connect up the uh, screen adapter board, this thing, to the screen and the Game Boy. And, did I drop it? I did drop it, there it is. We get a little spacer for getting this thing positioned properly and a, um, an adhesive gasket for getting this thing stuck down in the screen. Now, these do work in a stock Game Boy Color housing if you want to use that, but I highly recommend getting uh, one of the brand new ones. These quote-unquote high-quality Game Boy Color shells are built pretty much for these kits in particular. They fit a few of the other kits as well, uh, but you should have to do exactly zero trimming if you use one of these shells. And um, this is the clear one. I kind of dig it because it, well, it's very, very clear. Uh, but they do come in quite a few colors. Notably, I think the uh, crystal one, probably going to be pretty popular. Uh, but they also got... <laughs> this one also caught my eye. I couldn't help myself. That blue chrome... Uh, but we're going to stick with the clear for today. Uh, screen kit doesn't come with one of these, so if you want to get one, make sure you grab it at the time. Uh, the case does come with an um, extra little bag of goo here for like the uh, cart shielding, screws, buttons, yada yada. Uh, I don't know how I feel about the buttons. I haven't tried them out yet might be worth grabbing a set of buttons if you don't want to use those. Uh, and it does come with a stock sized screen, which is convenient, or screen lens rather, because the kit does not come with one, and they are glass. I uh, don't usually mention that because I think that's the um, standard for lenses these days, but it is glass. For those that are wondering, um, but you can grab others if you want. It's just a stock sized kit. Anywho, let's go ahead and get on with the install. I'm going to set that aside. Take a look at tonight's victim. Perfectly working Game Boy Color. Nothing wrong with it. Let's see if we can change that. So I have, in the name of expediency, already taken out most of the screws. So it comes apart just like that. Six screws off the back and then this whole back panel lifts off gonna set this aside. We won't need it. For testing your Game Boy, you can use it. Um, just continue tearing it apart, get everything plugged in, then slip the back on and you can pop your batteries in there. I just made a video on that. Feel free to check it out if you're curious, but we will continue tearing this down. Um, and like I mentioned in that uh, other video here, I like to gather power usage numbers so that we can see exactly what kind of power usage these new kits demand. Um, it's nice to be able to grab an estimate for battery life. So let's say, for example, uh, you have your stock Game Boy and uh, you usually run a specific type of battery and you get, for example, 20 hours of battery life on those cells. Um, 
if a Game Boy pulls about 100 milliamps beforehand on those cells and then 200 milliamps afterwards on those same cells with the backlight kit, then you can probably guesstimate that your, back, your battery life is going to be exactly half of what it was before. So I am going to turn on my power supply, set it to the correct voltage, 2.4 volts, and then boot up the Game Boy Color. And with the exact same game that I pretty much always test with, um, slightly different save, but same hardware, should still be the same. Regular legitimate Pokemon Silver here. In the overworld at 2.4 volts, this Game Boy Color pulls anywhere from 78 to 86 milliamps, which is pretty much in line with what I'd expect. 77 to 86. So now that we have our baseline, we can pull it apart and continue the install. I gotta kill that last screw. Screen comes out, just slide those two latches up towards the top and then the whole bale will slide out. And you can, uh, if you can't grip the ribbon, sometimes it's a little bit more difficult to get out, but I've had this thing apart a few times so it's a little bit looser. Uh, you can hinge the whole thing up and then pull it out like that. Um, if you're not reshelling your Game Boy, as in you're reusing your original shell, pop out the original screen by just giving the shell a little bit of a twist to pop that adhesive out and then just pull the screen out. Easy peasy. And I'll save this for something. I don't know. Probably won't ever use it, but I'll keep it on hand because of who I am as a person. But anyway, let's go ahead and test this thing out. So first thing, notice there is quite a long wire on here. We're going to connect that up. We're going to connect that up, pins up. And then plug in the game side. Goes pins down, excuse me, to the Game Boy. And then the screen goes pins up. I'm going to fold that up, drop my game in, and let's try it out. Flip that on. Oh no, my screen doesn't come on. It's kind of what I expected. I didn't solder this cable up. So now, let's pause that, get that cable soldered up. I'm going to unplug that. We're going to flip that over, and in this particular case, the cable is nice and long because they expect you to plug it to basically wrap it around the positive battery terminal. I think that is kind of sloppy, and um, I don't know, I don't, I don't think wrapping it around a battery terminal is a good option. So what I'm going to do instead is I am going to trim it down, because it's a little excessively long. start up my soldering iron so it's ready and we are going to solder it to the C pin on the power switch so to do that I'm going to put my iron right on that pin as soon as it's heated up come on there it goes Put my iron right on that pin and feed a little bit of solder into the intersection where my soldering iron hits that pin. I'm going to tin the wire that I just shortened. Clean off my iron tip. And then we're going to solder that onto the pin I just tinned. Again, this is pin C. A 
Ooh, that is an awful joint, isn't it? Let's fix that up. There we go. That's a lot better. And unfortunately, this kit does require soldering. So that also means to test it out, we have to do a little bit of soldering. But once that's connected, flip that over. This thing plugged in. And we'll try it out. Comes on. Excellent. Let's get it to the same place in game. So in the overworld on whatever brightness setting this is, at 2.4 volts it's pulling 167 to 175 milliamps. And it looks like it starts at the highest brightness I believe. Nope, it goes up one more, two, three, four, okay. So now we're on the lowest brightness, it is pulling... 144 to 156 milliamps and then we have this is the first brightness level two three four five six seven eight eight levels total let's see if it uh holds that brightness or before doing that two three four five six seven oh did i miscount one Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There we go. Okay. And at max brightness, it's pulling uh, 203 to 191 milliamps. Reverse those numbers. And I'm going to set it to low brightness. And we're going to quickly power cycle it and see if it holds the brightness level. I think it should, based off of this chip here, U6, that looks like an EEPROM, so it's probably saving the settings. And indeed it is, that is the lowest brightness level. Let me actually, I'm going to switch that off there, pop the game out, try that again, two, three, ah, good enough. Bump it up a few brightness levels and I'm going to press and hold on the brightness select and you can see it got a little bit darker uh, I'll probably show this off a little bit better once I get it actually installed but you see it has a pixel grid emulation mode which I personally don't care too much for but I guess it's nice to have that looks like a black and white mode pixel grid black and white and then back to color interesting but uh, we know it works Oops. So uh, I guess let's continue the install, see what happens. I'm going to leave it on that. Why not? Now that we have tested, get out of here. All right, I am going to disconnect it from the backlight side, leave that plugged into the Game Boy because that is soldered on. So make it easier on my end. Uh, if we wanted to, hmm, actually I'm curious, that's plugged in here. I bet one of those is a touch sensor pad that we can solder up to if something gets disconnected. So if, for example, mistakenly rip this pad off I believe is that it? nah oh there you go so this solder pad this little square closest to the connector that is a replacement if you don't want to use this pad on the cable you can solder up like a little bit of copper tape attached to a wire and uh, solder it to this pad here. There are three square pads in a row. You want the rightmost one. And I am betting 
This leftmost one is the um, power. Yep. And the leftmost one is the power. There you go. The more you know. And this middle one is probably ground. Yep. So there you go. If you accidentally uh, tear this off your ribbon cable, or if you don't want to use it, or if you accidentally tear this off your ribbon cable, you've got alternate solder pads. Anyway, let us carry on here. So like I said, if you wanted to use this in your stock Game Boy housing, it does literally just drop in. There's no, uh, no nothing else you have to do. Uh, there is this little spacer here. I don't actually know where this goes. I'm betting. Ew. No, no idea. Maybe it goes up here to make sure the spacing's right. I don't know. I'm actually going to pause and double check that. I will return momentarily. All right. So it's exactly what I thought it was, but it didn't go where I thought it went. So this goes on the right side here. Just jam that up against the wall, and then you jam the screen up against it and towards the top. And then once you've got it all assembled, everything should be nicely positioned and centered and whatnot. I'm not going to use this screen or this housing though, so let me pop that out of here. Uh oh, got stuck down. I wasn't paying attention. Maybe we are using this housing. Ah. Good thing I left the tab on. All right. So, like I said, we're going to be using the uh, clear housing here. And we do not have to use... Notice where the wall is on this one compared to stock. Oh, it's actually in the same spot. That is my mistake. The uh, screen cutout area... It's quite a bit larger, so I thought it was closer, but it's not. Okay, that's okay. This goes in one way. And the uh, adhesive is spaced for the shell. So, we might as well use it. Wait, is that the right way? Yeah. I just had it and then I got confused. But it's okay. So we're going to peel off the outside here, and I'm going to leave the center in, because leaving the center in gives us something not only to grip, but it also leaves the uh, adhesive with a little bit more structure so you can get it placed evenly. Stick that on there, bam, just like that. You can pop the center out. And I like to save these. They're convenient. Handy for activities, certain things. All right. Next, let us go ahead and choose our lens. Uh, I got four choices. I think two of them are the same. Yep. So I can do stock, or I can do this uh, fancy Sakura lens. Or I can do this little Pokemon Center one. I'm going to do something, though. Actually, oh, wait, no. I have a lens that I've been saving exactly for this build. All right, so we have lots of choices when it comes to lenses for Game Boy Color now, uh, but there are quite a few different styles. Now, I would have liked to use one of these two for this build, but these are both 2.6-inch size lenses, whereas this screen is a 2.45 inch screen. And so the cutout is not quite as, yeah. So we want something with a little bit smaller of a cutout. The 2.45 inch screen, this one right here, is about stock size, so you can just use stock size lenses. The 2.6 inch screen is a little bit larger. Uh, it is used for the Cloud Game Store kits, uh, but there are also the Q5 kits. Ah, excuse me which use the exact same size cutout, but position slightly different. Uh, neither of these will work unless you want to see extra around the end, the edges there, which 
in this particular case wouldn't be that big of a deal because uh, the screen is or the shell is at least trimmed. Uh, we have the older style ones that are stock size. I like the mirror ones, but these are unfortunately plastic. Um, and then, blast to the past here, we have the 2.2 inch size lenses. Don't use one of those. You're going to get screens cut off, but they look horrifying, I think, especially compared to the newer ones. Uh, but Bob Jaunty, if that's what you want. Um, I'm going to use this thing because I'm literally never going to get another opportunity. Let me just double check that the spacing is all right. Because it was, yeah. I've always liked this style lens, but I never got the opportunity to really use it. And I've had I've been sitting on this thing a very long time. For those that know where I got it, I don't think it makes me a hypocrite because I've had it a lot longer than I've been uh, preaching that you shouldn't buy from that vendor. Um, and it's not like, you know, I already have it. I shouldn't get rid of it just because I'm not exactly the best person to buy from, but it is what it is. Hoping that wouldn't happen. But there we go. Get that in there. And I am going to clean this up and make sure that all of the fingerprints I'm seeing are on the outside and not the inside. So once it's together, I won't be able to pull it apart again. Not easily, not without likely breaking something. So I gotta clean it a little bit. This thing. Oh, I definitely should double check this ahead of time. Sugar. It's odd that the uh, gasket it comes with is not quite sized to the screen. But, alright, let me double check the positioning on that before I commit this. I don't know why I had to double check that. I literally just checked it. The positioning is the same as stock. I'm gonna peel that off so it doesn't go missing. We take our spacer here, jam it on the right side or left, depending on your point of view. in there. Top and right up against that thing. And there we go. Noise. Simple. Now we need batones. And I just got a bunch. Oh, these are all Game Boy Pocket. Oh no! I have to go find buttons. 
Eh, we'll just go with the stock buttons. I can always swap them out later. As it turns out, I don't have the fun colors I thought I did because of who I am as a person. That or I do have them and I just don't know where I put them. Uh, my most recent button run for Game Boy Color looks like this, which I bought all these thinking I was going to be doing more uh, backlights. But, oh well, so be it. LED backlights for buttons. These are the buttons it comes with. I don't know, not feeling it. They don't, they look particularly cheap. I don't know what's up with that because I know the manufacturer that makes this shell can do way better than that, but why they chose not to is beyond me. Um, then again, they could feel a lot better than they look, who knows. I'm not gonna give them the chance though because I've got perfectly good stock buttons that we can use. I am going to use the screws that it came with. Whoops, that wasn't inserted all the way. The screws that it came with. Um, stock screws are sometimes a little bit too long or they're sized a little bit funny. Uh, when in doubt, use the screws that the shell came with and you'll have a much better time. I know the uh, old previous saying was, uh, you know, use your OEM screws because aftermarket ones are trash, but we've come quite a long way since then. So that doesn't, it's not necessarily true anymore. I would have liked to have stuck that down. Let's actually do that before going too much further. Take a little bit of that adhesive there. side and just flip it around and stick that down oh stick into the tweezers there we go would be a fantastic time to accidentally scratch your shell with your tweezers, so be careful if you're using one of these nice shiny clear ones like me. Cool. These screws especially are a different size, the ones on the IR shield. 
Uh, I think you can use the OEM ones if you really want to, but pick one because they are a different thread pitch. So if you install one, you can't go and then swap out to the other one. What's this? Oh, I got a serial number sticker. That's a neat touch. All right. So unlike the uh, funny playing shells, these don't have the um, battery compartment trimmed out. So if you're doing a lithium ion mod, like one of those Giltessa ones, um, you're going to have to cut that out here too. In my case, I'm sticking with double A's, so I don't really care, but just a heads up. Like on uh, that Giltessa one we did a while back, I had to shave that down. I didn't have to do too much in this particular case, but you know, keep it in mind. Unlike... Doo -doo -doo. I actually set this aside on my desk to do a test fit, but I forgot. Well, bad. It'll fit there, I promise. You just have to attach the screen to the lens first. Oh, and power switch. Give me uh, get my hand in the way there. I'm trying to hold that at an angle so you can at least see what I'm doing and not just stare at the back of my hand. I mean, unless you're into that, which won't begrudge you your vices, but I don't need to hear about it either. Like these jugies, but let's actually test it with uh, some nickel metal hydrides here. <gasps> I don't have any handy. What have I done? I'm gonna make sure it actually boots. All right, went and grabbed some uh, patented batteries. Two of them. These are actually IKEA Lada batteries. They're a few years old at this point. Uh, I think I last charged them about four months ago, and they've just been sitting on my desk since. But good enough, I guess. Uh, let us try the Pokemon game. And I am actually going to kill these lights here, so we can get a little bit of a better look at this thing. Bring that in. And right now it should be in that black and white mode, which is a little weird, but all right. Sure. I do see a little bit of flickering. Uh, one thing, unfortunately the screen alignment isn't the best. I'm going to blame the lens, but I'm not 100% sure what that is. I think it's fair to blame the lens because this lens wasn't for this kit, but it's close enough that I'm not too fussed. Oh, we should be testing with the uh, flash cart, shouldn't we? That way I can do the um, other tests. 
Nice, boots up on the nickel metal hydride, no problem. What was I looking for? Uh, GB test drums, that would be it. Under Matt Curie, scrolling bars. With the reset, so same spiel as usual, but you know, if you've been here, you, you know the spiel by now. If you haven't been here, then you know, this is for you. Uh, so what's going on is this is running a test where it is moving all of the uh, these bars over on the left-hand side at a constant rate. The idea is every time that S hits the left-hand side of the screen, it is issuing an LCD reset command. Now, this is actually pretty interesting because this kit is not handling that reset as well as it could. Now, I don't know what the reasoning for that is, but do keep in mind that we are still in black and white mode. So let me swap that over back to color and see if that improves. It does not. So what that means is on games like Pokemon Pinball, you might see quite a bit of uh, weird resetting. Let's actually try out uh, Pokemon Yellow real quick. I think that one has a lot of resetting as well. I think Pinball is going to be one of the worst offenders. I'll have to go find my cart. I didn't expect to, didn't expect to have to break it out. If I'm being honest. So I think it is in battles, not when you transition indoors. So let's go get in a battle. Oh yeah, it's not even noticeable. Yeah, that's fine. Let me go grab Pokemon Pinball. All right, I got it. And uh, do note that Pokemon Pinball is one of those games that takes a battery. Don't forget to take batteries out of your games, folks. This one's starting to look a little worse for wear. Uh, I'm gonna leave it in here for the duration of the video, but it's coming out after the video. Anyway, the reason we wanna test with Pokemon Pinball here is because this one uses screen reset every time you swap from the top LCD or top half of the map to the bottom half of the map. And since this screen kit is not handling resets as well as it could, oh, that's not bad at all. Nope, that's totally fine. Don't worry about it. Uh, that is a case of the artificial stress test catching things that don't actually happen when you're playing the game. It's totally fine. The reason we do that test is the uh, one of the first few kits for Game Boy Color in particular uh, would drop out for like a full second after a reset, which <laughs> it's not so good in Pokemon Pinball because every time we go from this bottom to this top, it issues a screen reset. And so I'm looking for tearing. I can see it during that reset. But if you're not looking for it, it's fine. Because it's, you know, you, you blink and you miss it. So I'd say... I'd say it's there if you look for it, but it's not an actual problem that's going to prevent gameplay. Um, some of the other kits as well would, uh, when you issue a screen reset, a full second after a screen reset, you'd see some tearing on screen. I wasn't seeing that here though, so continue with our battery of tests. So we get... Zelda, Link's Awakening DX. Do the same thing that I usually do over here, which is we're just going to swap back and forth, and we're looking at two different things here. First, we're seeing if there is any um, artifacting from that wood post onto the green grass on some of the older, like, 9380 kits, like what's in here. There would be some quite significant artifacting. Actually, I don't know if it's this one in particular, or if it was the Game Boy Advance version of this kit, but either way, nonetheless. Not seeing it here, 
The other thing we're looking at is this guy's chain here because on the original Game Boy, and I'm pretty sure that extended to the Game Boy Color, there was no way to do transparency in the sprites. So what they did was they would just flicker sprites on and off real quick, about 60 times a second. And because of the horrifyingly bad pixel response of the original screens, that would result in a transparency effect. So what we're looking at here is to see if that's displayed properly. Now, in person, I'm seeing a little bit of flickering. Uh, it's kind of to be expected because these modern screens have much better pixel response time than uh, the original screens ever did. Uh, but in the video footage that I'm looking at on my phone, the, the preview looks perfectly fine. And uh, you know what, to be honest, it's fine. It's not bothering me. The other thing we're looking at is when it transitions, we're looking to see if his chain does anything weird. And it doesn't in this case. Um, like I mentioned, some of the other screens had um, some really weird pixel response uh, artifacts, I guess, where if something was flickering, it would continue flickering in place even after that art of that object should no longer be there. Um, what else do we want? GB test 240p. And we can run all those tests in the 240p test suite, but I like the uh, dedicated ROMs. It's a little bit uh, a little bit more friendly, I think. So let's look at the grid here, and we can see if my you know how my alignment's doing. So like I said, it looked like the right hand side was cut off a little bit, and from where I'm sitting, it still is. But from where you see the screen, it's perfectly fine. Uh, if I hold the Game Boy at the same angle that I'm seeing it as you see that it's a little bit cut off on the bottom right. Um, but I, that's just an angle thing. I guess you hold it straight on or, you know, for me, none of the screen is cut off right now. Of course, you see it at a horrifying angle, but I'm not looking at it from the same angle that my camera is. Uh, so it's fine. It could be better, but it's fine. Linearity, we want to see that those circles are actually circles. And since this is using integer scaling, that is indeed the case. Uh, I don't think we care too much about any of these other tests. Uh, what was the other one I wanted? Oh, there's color bars just for calibration. You can see viewing angles are not the greatest. Good enough. But things get a little wonky at different angles. Um... Color bleed, that one's fine. It usually has trouble displaying that bottom. Mm. Excuse me, sorry. That bottom right color. Uh, some screens have trouble with that. I haven't seen a Game Boy screen fail that test though. Uh, shadow sprite. This is the this is the interesting one. So if we leave that flickering there on some of the other kits, eventually that flickering will stop and it'll just become a static image, and then we can move it again and then we'll see flickering both where it was and where I moved it to. In this particular case, I'm not seeing that, which is a good sign. Uh, it means the screen is working properly and we're not getting any weird leftover artifacting. We're not gonna do that. I think the lag testing would be pretty interesting, but unfortunately I don't quite have the setup ready to test that. And then there's that scroll test. The only thing this doesn't do is give you that reset. You can see if there's any weird backlight bleeding, which in this case there is not. And then there's some other tests related to audio, but that, you shouldn't have messed with that at all. So all in all, I'm, I'm pretty satisfied with this thing. This looks good. What did I want to see? I don't know. Let me pop in another game here. Yeah, Pokemon Crystal. Honestly, I'm not too wowed with this screen. There's been so, so many kits for Game Boys over the last few years that, like, there, there's nothing new here. Like, yeah. It is a pretty darn good screen, and if you want a stock-looking Game Boy, but that still has a backlight, 
then yeah, this is probably the best one you can get yet. Uh, because if you cut off that pad, then you can't even see, you know, looking at it, there's no weirdness with a clear shell. Uh, there's no excessive light bleeding anywhere. Um, I mean, yeah, if you look for it, it's there, but it's not excessive, you know? Like, I don't have anything extra mas masked off, and looking at it from the front, I don't see any light bleeding whatsoever. Uh, there's no screen sticking out the bottom, which I know a lot of you guys had complaints about, but personally, I thought it was kind of neat looking. Uh, we no longer have to trim those pins down. Uh, and get the best of both worlds. I personally like the integer scaling, but if you're one of those sadists, you can turn on that pixel grid emulation and lose most of your contrast and brightness. Uh, but then it looks better in pictures, I guess. I don't know. I personally don't like it, but for those that like it, it's there. Um, and then I guess we have that black and white mode without the pixel grid, and then black and white with the pixel grid. Now, notice I put in Pokemon Crystal specifically for this because you can't run Pokemon Crystal in black and white normally. That doesn't work that way. This is Pokemon Crystal. Um, so it's, it's a feature if you want to use it. I'm personally not feeling it, but nice to have, I guess. We'll put it back in color. The shell, on the other hand, the shell I am very impressed with. For context, this is what we previously had when it comes to clear. Um, it's all right. I mean, it's nothing to write home about. But, like, the screw posts are stripped out on this thing after the first time installing it. You can see that one. It's all stripped out. Uh, this thing comes apart really easily. Uh, there's weird creaks holding it together. The battery door rattles. I don't like it. It was what we had. <clears throat> it was what we had, so it was what we put up with. But it sucked. I hate it. I've been waiting to reshell this Game Boy. Um, I've been waiting for the new shells to reshell this thing since I assembled it. Uh, notice I didn't even bother putting stickers on it. The lens still has the protective plastic on it. Yeah, I was going to pop this thing apart right away. Only reason I didn't was because it has that uh, lipo kit in there that I wanted to test out. but. Look at that, side by side, they're about the same size, but you don't have that huge screen sticking out. So yeah, in the case of the 9380 kits, this one is definitely the way to go. But if you got one of them Q5s, you know, I think they're pretty good, the laminated ones especially. It's very difficult to be laminated. But if you're not into that for whatever reason, then yeah, this is, this is a pretty good kit. So I guess that, I guess I gotta talk about this. Oh wow, he won't even let me not help him. What a jerk. Um, at this point, there are several different categories for quote unquote best backlight kits for Game Boy Color. Now I have mocked people for asking this all the time. Uh, you know, what's the best stock like backlight kit. This is it. Uh, I still firmly hold the belief that if you're looking for a stock looking Game Boy, then go no further than the stock screen. That looks the most stock compared to any other screen you can get. Um, if you want to reshell it, fine, but do keep in mind that Nintendo never shipped Game Boys that looked like this. It doesn't look stock anymore. But, I mean, I guess if that's what you're into, then then this is it. If you want the um, highest visual fidelity backlight kit, then that is still by far those funny playing Q5 laminated kits. Uh, you get a bigger screen for your buck. It is laminated. It is nice close up to the lens. You don't have those uh, weird viewing angle things where if I hold it at the wrong angle, you start losing screen. This doesn't have that. This is better. But 
if you don't want that, this is the next best thing. I will say, my previous recommendation for um, like limited edition consoles, if you wanted to modify a limited edition, like a rare Game Boy, you didn't want to cut up the shell, you wanted to use it, but you didn't want to cut up the shell because you have commitment issues. Um, that used to be this old 2.2 inch thing. Uh, now, this is garbage and I don't recommend it in any situation. This is by far a better way to go. Um, so yeah, that's what I got. I mean, of course, I, I hate saying stuff like that in the video because by the time the next backlight kit comes out, I'm probably gonna change my opinions. But that's what I got for now as of March 21st. Um, it's pretty good. I'm, I'm digging it. I will probably go play with this thing a little bit more. Uh, I especially like that everything is working with a flash cart. This is a EverDrive, by the way, not just some weird Pokemon Crystal thing. Um, actually, you know what? I'm sorry. One more test. We're still on the Nickel Metal Hydride batteries. Let's try the clone EverDrive, the most power hungry of the bunch. It's entirely possible that this thing just doesn't work. I do have a broken EverDrive. I don't know which is which. <laughs> Might be that one. <laughs> Authentication error. Nice. Okay, so that one's probably bricked now. Um, but it boots. So that's good enough. Uh, let me real quick try out the Easy Flash. Double check that that boots. Thought I had it on my desk. Oh yeah, I do. It's right here. Easy Flash Junior. It's a little bit more power hungry than EverDrive. Uh, I usually like testing with the Easy Flash because if it works with the Easy Flash, it'll work with the EverDrive. And it looks like that is still the case here. Ta-da! So yeah, there we go. Um, back to what I was saying about personal recommendations for backlight kits. Uh, I do maintain a wiki page with information on every single backlight kit that I know of. Um, that will have more up-to-date opinions than this video will. Uh, because like I said, as new kits come out, I can't really revise the video, but I can revise the wiki. So I do. Uh, so if you're watching this video and that question comes up, no, Marco, what's the best backlight kit? Check the wiki. Information will be in there. Trust me. There's summaries for each section at the top. It's divided by console. So if you want Game Boy Color, there's a Game Boy Color section. If you want Game Boy Advance, there's a Game Boy Advance section. If you want Game Boy Pocket, so on. Um, I guess the only thing that doesn't really have a section is Game Boy Light, but all of the Game Boy Pocket kits are compatible with the Game Boy Light, with the exact same caveats. And there's no Game Boy Micro section because there just aren't any Game Boy Micro backlit kits. It's already backlit from the factory. Technically, it is compatible with the Game Boy Advance backlit kits. But I suppose that is a topic for another day. One more. Doesn't come with one, but. Oh, that wasn't under the sticker. I'm going to ruin this nice shell. I'm trying to get the sticker up. Ugh. Okay, maybe we aren't using the sticker. It's stuck down quite a bit better than uh, I'd anticipated. I think I got that corner. Yeah. Yeah, boy. Oh, no. The adhesive is let go. <laughs> okay. 
well, it is what it is. This is a stupid old sticker that I bought from Mortoff Games way back in the day. I don't know if they're still around, but pretty sure they are. There we go. How about that? There is your stock looking with a little bit of a little bit of rice. Stock looking. Game Boy Color. There we go. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you all next time. Be sure to check out the description for links to uh, Retro Game Repair Shop for this kit if you want to check it out. Um, this shell, they, they sell these things. I'm Honestly, I have more to say about the shell than I do with the backlight kit. Backlight kit is great, but the shell is fantastic. I just love the aesthetic. Um, and like I said earlier, you can get other fancy ones if you want, like Pokemon Crystal. Um... Shell backlight kit. Uh, this particular lens, I honestly don't even know if you can still get one, but if you can, I'm not going to link to it. Sorry, it is what it is. Uh, shell comes with the stickers, IKEA for the batteries, and uh, this last sticker you can also get on uh, Retro Game Repair Shop. But that's all I got, guys. I'll catch you all next time. Thanks for watching.